Baby boomers make up a third of internet users. A third. Highly internet savvy. They have to be. Their kids, their grandkids, family. Don't, they don't live in the same neighborhood anymore like it used to be. Everyone's scattered all over the world. And if you don't get online, you miss out. You miss out on birthday parties and pictures and everything else and email. So this is a generation that is online in big numbers, but this is not what I would consider a tech savvy group. They're internet savvy, but not tech savvy. The difference is these are people that probably have AOL 4 and don't want to upgrade because it works. All my stuff is there. I don't want to mess with it. Leave it alone. That's that generation. But you need to learn to sell. That's, nothing happens unless a sale takes place. Sales is not a dirty word, it's influence. It's knowing how to influence somebody. It's thinking about what's in front of them before it gets put in front of them and what the reaction is gonna be. That's what ignites a viral campaign. The greatest book ever written on viral social and affiliate success. I'm gonna tell you what the title of that. It's one book that is the absolute best book on all of the subjects that are discussed at this show that I'm discussing. If you want the best book on Twitter, this is the best book about how to succeed in Twitter. Um, and I'm sure you'll be very surprised to know it was written 70 years ago. It's How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. How is internet marketing changing things? How is it changing your customers and your business? In a few different ways. One, we live in a clickable culture. Everything we want is a click away. Everyone, top of mind, goes to the internet for everything. We live in an on-demand society. Companies like TiVo started that, where I can have what I want, when I want, how I want it, anytime I want it. What I want, when I want, how I want it, anytime I want it, which changed the way people do things. It, what the, one of the things it did is our customers now have more choices than ever before. And because they have more choices, we have more competition. If you don't give it to them the way they want it, they choose someone else. Bad things happen when you don't adapt. You may not like all these changes, but you really can't do anything about it. You have to adapt to it. One of the things that keeps this growth fueling has been social media or participatory media. It's become mainstream. It has been mainstream. It really started with these two guys. Two men in their 20s sold their company for $1.6 billion. That company was YouTube. The company that bought them was Google. Now I know what you're thinking, because I could see your head shaking. $1.6 billion is a lot of money. But these guys put in almost two full years, so <laughs> they really put their time in. Future ain't what it used to be. YouTube was not worth $1.6 billion in the traditional sense. The reason they were worth $1.6 billion to Google is because they changed the world. How many companies can boast that they changed the world? Show of hands, keep your hands up. Even people at home, keep your hands up. How many people here have watched a video online? 98.9% .9 of the room. Look around this room. Isn't every age group imaginable represented here? There are no, the demographics for YouTube are everyone. You wanna know who uses YouTube? Everyone uses YouTube. It's that simple. Bless you. YouTube has 65,000 uploads of new video every single day. Every day, 65,000 new videos are on YouTube. Anybody need to catch a train? <laughs> Nobody? Good. And there's 100 million videos watched every day. 100 million videos. That's changing the world. Sales is about persuasion. Persuasion requires emotion. Emotion requires connection. Connection leads to action. That's when things start to happen. That's when the rubber meets the road. When you can make these things happen. When you think like a customer, you start to target. The web is not a place for a shotgun approach. It's a very targeted approach. I only want to be in front of people that want to be in front of me. You have to think like a customer. So if you're writing things down, that's what you need to write down. Social media with no strategy drives traffic. Strategic thought and value creates revenue. I'm a born and raised Jersey guy. I come in and out of the city all the time. Traffic has never, ever meant anything good to me, ever, <laughs> ever. 
It's the same thing with the web. It's slowdowns. It's interruptions. How much time are you going to spend with, with, with bad leads? You know, I can't really handle many more people that are emailing me out of the blue that want to get me to the top of Google. So it, it's, I'd rather only show up in front of the people that matter. I want to connect with the right people. I put a lot of thought into doing that. Facebook is huge. Huge. Someone here mentioned LinkedIn before. LinkedIn and, and said, well, Facebook, you know, I don't know if that's good for us. Facebook is good for everybody. Everybody. Every business. Period. LinkedIn is business to business. It's great for getting employees. It's great for doing a lot of vendors, that kind of stuff. Your customers are on Facebook. I mean, look at some of these numbers. Three billion minutes spent per day on Facebook. One in five people that access the internet go to Facebook. That means one in five of us have been to Facebook. I won't make you raise your hands. The fastest growing segment is 35 and up. Is that not a customer? That is not a 13 year old girl. Those are people that spend money. Everybody's on Facebook. They sold 1.6% of the company to Microsoft for $240 million. I, listen, for $240 million, I'd have hoped they would have rounded up to 2%, but, you know, that's just me. Uh, apparently, Microsoft doesn't know how to negotiate. $240 million gets you 1.6. Where in the world in history has that ever happened before? Currently, they're worth $15 billion. They were founded in 2004 by this guy, who's 20, he's 25 years, yeah, he's happy, but 25 years old. So much for a five-year plan. I've been working on my five-year plan for 11 and a half years. He's the young, one of the youngest billionaires in the world. The world is changing. This stuff is popular. This is where your customers are. You need to learn about it. You may hate it. It may be way outside your comfort zone. You have to do it. You have to stand out or stand aside. Period. You cannot keep doing the same things you've been doing. Being unique and real will help you break free from all the noise. The issue is if you're not diverse and you rely on one marketing outlet, it's very easy for your competitors to gobble up your customers because they're there. So when one solution is failing, and that's the lesson here, you need another one to carry you through. Let's say that guy's Facebook. <laughs> Eventually we'll know and we'll connect with more people in the virtual world than in person. You may be saying, not me. I, I'm a relationship guy. I'm the guy that's going to, it's face to face or it's nothing. Well, guess what? It probably is nothing. It's what it'll become because this is the way that people will connect. That's where it starts. I'm not saying they won't eventually connect with you offline, but it's going to start here. This type of thinking leads to one thing, resting on your laurels. <laughs> Just by the size of that laugh, I know this is a little bit of an older crowd. I did this last week in Atlantic City. Crickets. You heard crickets. It was a technology show. All this knowledge that I've just given you, all the knowledge in these books, we are going into a brand new decade. This is the end of an era. What got you to this point will not, I promise you, will not get you through the next decade. The world is changing every minute of every day very fast. You have to adapt. This is why we have to learn to click ask.